The indexes, this isn't available in Canada, and, and transportation really is a, is a backbone of this country. So we need to do, do whatever we can to provide tools to make it a healthy industry. And by doing this, it's a tool for both the buyer and the seller. I mean, you can do strategic decisions, you can do planning, you can, um, you can look at negotiations, all of this, and you can even understand why the variance is in your, in your budgeting. So really a great tool, and it's all based on statistical fact. Mm -hmm. Doug, thank you so much for walking us through it. Good Thank to you. talk to you. Pleasure. We've been joined by Doug Payne. He is a president at New Logics. Now let's check in with CTV News Channel and see what else is going on today. The CTV News Channel News Break is brought to you by Toyota. Did you know about half the Toyotas sold in Canada now are made in Canada? That's Toyota. More for you. Good morning. Here are some of the stories we're following this hour on CTV News Channel. A roadside bomb has killed another Canadian soldier in Afghanistan. Private Jonathan Couturier was returning from a mission to root out the Taliban when his vehicle was struck by a roadside bomb. Eleven other soldiers suffered minor wounds. At the time of his death, Jonathan was returning from an operation designed to protect the population by removing important insurgent command and control networks in the Panjwai district. Couturier was based in Valcartier, Quebec. He is the 131st Canadian soldier to die in the mission in Afghanistan. A major outbreak of the swine flu is being reported on Vancouver Island, where the virus has spread through a cluster of Aboriginal communities. Most of the cases are in the settlement of a house set. The community can only be reached by water or air. A Tofino doctor says he's treated dozens of cases, but that most of them have been mild. The majority of patients are young adults. And that is the latest from CTV News Channel. Marty and Francis, back to you. Thank you very much, Sarada. Now, uh, coming up after the break, we're going to have Stock Sense and, of course, the second part of our Wei Zhang Tang interview that Marty had yesterday. Stay with us. It's the perfect name. Escape. Let's go. Anywhere. The Ford Escape. Eight inch ground clearance. Intelligent four wheel drive. Infotainment. Every safety feature available in the Escape. Standard. It's fun to drive. Comes in a V6, four cylinder, or hybrid. It's the most fuel efficient SUV on the planet. My buddy. I drive one. I drive one. I drive one. The new 2010 Escape. This is Ford today. Drive one. As a trader, my major concerns are cost, access to product, and the stability of my broker. Interactive Brokers is my choice because of its superior price execution, ultra-low commissions, global direct market access, and financial strength. If you are an individual or institutional trader with the same concerns, visit interactivebrokers.com to learn more. Interactive Brokers. Stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds. Worldwide from one account. Capturing the beauty of nature, that's my vision. Every day, Transitions lenses are there to help care for my sight. Transitions lenses adjust to changing light to reduce glare and help protect your eyes from UV damage so you can see better today and tomorrow. Live your vision. Transitions, healthy sight in every light. Purchase and register a pair of Transitions lenses and a donation will be made to CNIB education and prevention programs. To learn more about vision health, visit cnib.ca. I trade to take control. I trade because it's fast and easy. I trade for my family's future. I trade because I know I can do better. I trade for me. I trade for me. I trade for me. I trade for me. Scotia I trade. Join today. Stock Sense is brought to you by Scotia iTrade. What do you trade for? Visit scotiaitrade.com. One of the things I've noticed recently in the research that I've been reading is analysts are starting to roll forward their uh, expectations in terms of estimates 
and the targets they are using from those estimates. They're looking out to 2010, in some cases 2011. I saw a report from Scotia on infrastructure stocks. So what you're going to start to hear a lot about over the next month or so is higher target prices for a lot of stocks. you got higher energy prices forecast next year, better economic numbers, better earnings numbers. They're going to be rolling that into their models. They're going to be adjusting their multiples. They might adjust them down a little bit for risk, but generally speaking, you're going to see targets rising over the next, I'm going to call it next three months or something. It's going to be uh, three months or so. It's going to be in the back of your head that those targets are all going to be rising. People are going to get excited, but remember, it's just normal stuff. You're rolling forward 12 months. They're going to be doing it on the indices. They're going to be doing it on sectors. They're going to be doing it on individual stocks. So be prepared for that. It's sort of bullish, but you got to know why. Just looking forward 12 months. Well, I was excited about going forward, but now I guess I'm not. Just a normal process in the second half of a year. And now we're going to turn to the uh, second half of our exclusive sit-down interview with Wei Zhen Chang. In fact, back in June, the Ontario Securities Commission laid 12 charges against Wei Zhen Tang and his companies, including securities fraud and unregistered trading. I asked him how the allegations made him feel. I'm very confident I will, I will beat them charges. So that's why everybody sees me. I, I, you know, I feel... I, I Where feel did these that, allegations come from in the first place? The first thing is OSC, you know, like these days, because OSC, not, they have nothing to do, they cannot protect the investor. So they come to somebody like a businessman, decent businessman like me, to be their target. You know, I'm, we are the Chinese, they're easy to target. No, there's Are you suggesting that there's a, a racial component here? It's a very big racial component, I think. Well, how, how so? Why the, the Chinese community? No, not the Chinese community. You see, in, you know, like uh, the Madoff is so big, right? that's a Ponzi, right? And that other real Ponzi stuff. But me, we have nothing to, to do with the Ponzi, you know? But, you know, the, the OIC, Actually, these days, they cannot protect the investors. Actually, they hurt the investor. What they do, they say, ah, I found one, you know, like this. But, you know, Ponzi or not, it's fundamentally determined, you know? It's not because you say or not. Because the, the beautiful thing is in Canada, they, people you know, like me still can talk, you know, not in, in, in somewhere you know, restricted, right? So that's, and the process, you know, the process is very good. The people like uh, like uh, OSE, they can make mistake. Everybody make a mistake. You know, they, they ch the OSE charge me Ponzi. You know, they don't have any account for the account. They don't have any fund anything. You know. Well, at the, if I can just uh, jump in at, at the the peak of your performance in recent years before the allegations, how much money were you managing? The people actually, the, the, the at uh, this is very. Uh, the peak, the money actually, $60 million is money flow, you know, from three years. But at any time, you know, uh, at most, I think, I, uh, you know, there's like $10 million is the most. You had a, at the most at any one time assets under management of $10, $10 million. million. Yeah, well, $60 million is, it's, uh, it's uh, misunderstood. Misunderstanding. Because there is not, because when we people talk about $60 million, it's you have $60 million in the account. But we only, people deposit $60 million and withdraw like about 40, this number is uh, to be determined, but I'm just, uh, you know, f for example, I raised $60 million, $45 million investor withdraw. You know, the thing is this, in the last three years like this, this is a phenomenal performance, you know, compared to any financial farm manager. Are you suggesting that you started with 10 million and you grew it to 60 million over the No, the I started course from scratch. Uh, no, I started from scratch, you know, no, no, nothing. You know, like only $10,000, something like that. Now, a lot of some clients are alleging that their money is is gone, that uh, they can't get it back. Are the no, clients actually, who claim to have lost money, will you be able to pay them back? Do you I have will, enough I, assets under management to pay no, them back? No, I don't have uh, any asset to pay them back. 
but I have big asset in my brain. You know, I can make market from the, I can make money from the market instantly, like, you know, right away. <laughs> That's what I. The only money can be get, you know, from is from market. But if, this is if a there's any money, is there any money? People already found it. You know, there's no money. Why is the, the people's? You know, but that is one of the one of the issues that. Uh, you were supposed to have and be investing millions and millions of dollars and now some of those clients want it back and they no longer have access to it perhaps it's not even there that's at the heart of these allegations no the allegation is that uh, you know when because the only things like uh, uh, my you know, like like my business like is uh, not like traditional like uh, mutual fund or hedge fund what they do every daily right i did something very creative you know strategically move you know when i was if i got enough money you know, or when i get ready to sit, sit down to trade i can make lots of money for investor that's why the money is but most but of the your money business is a business built on trust your yeah, clients yeah, yeah. need to trust you yeah your clients don't trust you now because of the allegations no, potentially actually, they don't trust you now how are you going to build the your only business thing, if this I, is a business of trust the only thing is this at a big and at the beginning right when on um, uh, february you know the end of february the things come out people got a panic M even myself i don't know how to handle this you know like this is just like i had i, I was a panic just like a federal reserve or bonaki you know Born in 2008, right? Last year, he was a panic, just like me was panic. If I, if he in my position, he will be charged like me, but I'm was a pan panic. Now everybody, I write everything, I tell all the story to my investor. Now the investor knows the, what I was trying to do, what I was trying to hope to help them. Now actually, most if. You see, I have 90% of the investor support me to trade. You know, anytime if I call, you know, most of the say, if you remove the OSC season order of trading, I still get 90% of investor behind me or trust me. You know, nobody else, you know, you don't have any Ponzi investor trust those people, right? The Ponzi doesn't want to trade. The, the Ponzi does not know to, how to trade. The Ponzi does need to trade, right? There are lots of things different. Why people are focused on one thing, you know? When you talk about a, a crime, you know, there is a, lots of things to consider, not only one thing. And of course, we are talking about a crime. And just to bring you up to date, these are the sorts of charges that Mr. Wei Zhan Tang is in fact facing right now. There are 12 charges in all, but here are some right off the top. Securities fraud, unregistered trading, illegal distributions, prohibited undertaking. And right now there's a cease trade order on Mr. Wei Zhan Tang, also his company, so he can't trade, nor can any securities within those companies be trading. So his complaint at this point in time is that he is unable to get back into the market to recoup whatever money might have been lost. And the interesting thing, of course, are the penalties related to it uh, could be five million or five years for each charge if, in fact, uh, they can prove that those are done. Here you can see five years, less a day, or both. So uh, the charges are pretty significant, and the OSC uh, is uh, pursuing those charges. Taking it very seriously, and so is Mr. Wei Zhen Tang. That will do it for us here on Market Morning, but we're handing things off to Pat Ball, and he's in the chair right after this. Stay with us. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Interactive Brokers, premier trading technology, greater returns through lower cost. Maybe it's the corner office with a view, the opportunity to exercise your share options, develop a new skill set, the partnership in a startup enterprise, or the simple recognition for a job well done. Whatever you want from life, the right career can help you get it. Post your resume now at Workopolis. With over 45,000 career opportunities, your life awaits at Workopolis.com. We speak car. 
We speak RPMs, so you can zip by other cars. But we also speak miles per gallon, so you can fly by gas stations. In fact, we speak miles per gallon so fluently, we can say one more thing. The new Ford Fusion S is the most fuel-efficient midsize sedan in Canada. And that's something no one else can say. We speak the 2010 Ford Fusion. This is Ford today. Drive one. Is there a mortgage for savers? There should be, since millions of Canadians want a mortgage that costs less and gets the mortgage free sooner. But do other mortgages make that possible? Not really. So ING Direct created the unmortgage, the mortgage for savers. Everything about the unmortgage is designed to help you save. You pay as little interest as possible because you always get our lowest rate without haggling ever. You also get flexible repayment options to make you mortgage-free sooner. You can add to any regular payment anytime. If you have some extra cash, make a larger payment. Even $20 a week can save you thousands and shorten your mortgage. Are you a saver? Then call now or visit unmortgage.ca. We'll show you how simple it is to get the unmortgage. And when you finalize your online application, an unmortgage expert will be dedicated to you every step of the way. Call or go online. Save your money. You are watching BNN, Business News Network, celebrating 10 years of outstanding business news coverage. There's the TSX, um, just off its lows for the day. It opened kind of flat and then moved lower on the day. We're down 34. Welcome back to Market Morning, though. I'm Pat Ball. And coming up in the next hour or so, we're going to talk diamonds uh, with Harry Winston's chief executive officer. Robert Gannicott is uh, in the UK and his operations are in the Yukon. Uh, but he's got a worldwide perspective, no question, about what's happening in the diamond market. Uh, we'll also have a special on ETS with Sam Safe of uh, Claymore. Paul Bagnall will join me on that. Your market update is next, though. This market update is brought to you by VectorVest Stock Analysis and Portfolio Management System. Before you invest, check VectorVest.com. Okay, let's take a look at that uh, intraday on the TSX because we had the opening, then a sell-off and a bit of a, a rebound happening on the TSX and uh, m not a lot of movement per se in terms of the groups overall. Uh, interesting, uh, despite some new orders in the rail business, uh, Bombardier can't seem to leave the station. Uh, that stock is uh, currently down 1.5% on the day, but tracking very closely to what's happening on the TSX overall. Oil prices, we'll throw those up because they're a big determinant of how we uh, fare, and you'll see that it's very close to what we've seen, maybe a little bit more exaggerated in the oil contract than the TSX overall. And we'll take a quick look at what's happening on the Canadian dollar as well. Canadian dollar, 93.46, down almost a third of a cent on the day. Uh, Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ again uh, as we head into triple witching. Not a lot of conviction uh, in the marketplace, kind of mixed there. Uh, Palm is interesting. They came out with their three-month numbers, and they beat on the top line and they beat on the bottom line expectations. They were expected to lose 24 cents. They only lost 10. They were expected to have revenue of 290-some-odd thousand. They came in with $360 million because that's new pre uh, that they've got. Uh, the stock, though, had built a lot of expectation into that, and it's down four and a half percent on the day. Uh, you might watch that stock carefully. I, I suspect the rebound as people go through the numbers in more detail. And in fact, analysts are really busy today in terms of uh, market impact. Uh, Toll Brothers, JP Morgan upgraded, and the stock's up some 3% on the day. Uh, uh, E-Trade uh, is also seeing a 2% move, although it was a little bit stronger on an overnight basis. There apparently is an upgrade on that one. And Citi took a look at uh, Procter & Gamble, and that stock is up some 3.5% on the day. So, as I say, listen to those analysts. They sometimes uh, can have uh, market impact. Uh, we just got uh, some word in. Uh, Harper is uh, winning, uh, wins a confidence vote today, so uh, that may have an impact on what's happening in the currency markets as well. But that's your market update right now. Uh, Paul Bagnell has been following the banks all uh, week long and uh, life insurance companies as well. Uh, and Paul, uh, what's the latest? Well, also what we've been doing all week long is looking back at the, the week that was uh, a year ago. That was the week, of course, that kicked off with the collapse of Lehman Brothers on September 15, 2008. A series of events followed. 
panic uh, through the markets and, and uh, the real acceleration of a, of, of a crisis uh, at financial institutions around the world. And certainly our banks and life insurance companies uh, were very much affected. Uh, their level of write-downs really stepped up after those events. Uh, in particular, the uh, life insurance companies were badly, badly hurt by the, uh, the huge sell-off in the, in the stock market. But uh, as we've heard before, and it's, uh, it's uh, absolutely correct, our institutions uh, survived this episode much, much better than uh, banks or, or insurers uh, almost anywhere else in the world. So here's a look back at the week that was and the year that was for Canada's banks and life coast. The subprime mortgage crisis was already in full gear when Lehman Brothers collapsed on September 15th last year and sent waves of panic through markets around the world. For Canada's banks and insurers, Lehman's failure made a bad situation much worse. Profit-destroying write-downs accelerated at most of the big five banks. After spending most of 2006 and 2007 trying to make its balance sheet less risky, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce suffered a massive setback. It has now taken $9.2 billion in crisis-related write-downs since the beginning of 2008. This storm uh, that has uh, hit the world financial markets along with uh, some elements that were uh, local to CIBC uh, are not consistent with uh, uh, the environment that we expected or the strategy that we want for the future. Life insurers suffered punishing losses on debt instruments issued by Lehman and other financial institutions crippled by the crisis. And collapsing stock markets forced the Life Co's to put billions of dollars into reserves for future payments to customers. In February and again in May this year, Manulife Financial reported its first quarterly losses since it went public in 1999. And on August the 6th, the unexpected. Manulife's dividend was cut in half to help build so-called fortress capital. If I knew with an absolute crystal ball that there was no risk of adverse developments in credit markets and equity markets and so on, we wouldn't need to do this. But we don't have that crystal ball. But while they did not escape unscathed, Canada's banks and life codes have fared better than their peers. The Canadian institutions haven't taken a nickel in taxpayer money. And they've been able to come to market starting as early as last October and raise additional capital by selling shares to investors. During the height of the panic, investors were seized with a fear that a major Canadian bank could cut its dividend, an unheard of event. That anxiety, coupled with the effects of the financial and economic meltdowns, drove down the value of Canadian bank stocks by 47%. But a dividend cut from a Canadian bank never came. And once investors became confident that dividends were safe, the bank stocks took off on an impressive rally. For investors, the question now is, at these levels, are bank stocks worth buying? I'd see them at least fully valued and, and probably vulnerable to a, a not an insignificant pullback here. There is plenty of debate over whether Canada's bank stocks are now fully valued. But nobody seems to dispute, in this country or elsewhere, the Canada's financial institutions weathered the worst financial storm in history better than their counterparts anywhere else in the world. So uh, the banks uh, have done pretty well in the stock market. I think the Life Co's have a tougher road back, the Manulife's and the Sun Life, uh, because uh, they really did, because of obligations they've got on things like segregated funds, they really did take a lot of money that would have been profit and put it into those reserves. And it may take a while before that money comes back out of reserves. You know, it's interesting. You know, there was the two conferences that, hap that happened this week on the banks and the life companies. Your point about the, uh, and the feature is great, by the way, but your point about the yields on these uh, banks holding up, they're still at 3.5% yields on mm -hmm. these things and people are the next question is when do they increase their dividends whereas as you rightly point out the life insurance companies manual life cut it in half uh, yesterday uh, one of the top executives of Sun Life thought it was appropriate at a conference to assure uh, analysts that there's no uh, dividend cut coming at Sun Life specifically he said senior management at Sun Life is not recommending to the board that anything be done to the dividend have we seen a crossover manual life came up with the concept of fortress capital uh, and Sun Life I think addressed capital issues mm -hmm. you oh, and yeah. I talked about this but has there been a crossover to the banks have the banks effectively gone to fortress capital by increasing their tier one capital they, well yeah you know what and what everybody says is that the market because it became jittery wasn't going to be happy with the minimum required which is about seven and a half percent of tier one mm -hmm. capital so we saw the banks uh, but as I said in that piece uh, you know they, they were able to sell preferred shares into the market only about five weeks after the collapse of Lehman I think two really, hundred really, million at a time right. kind of tranches right. uh, that would replace existing preferreds, 
right. granted, but they were and able a, to and do at it. somewhat higher rates than they would like to be giving uh, to the market. It was that disappeared. Those those premiums on rates disappeared within a month or two. Right. Uh, and so they're, they are now all about, I think they're uh, 10 to 12 percent now, the banks, so they're well in excess of, uh, of uh, regulatory uh, minimums. But it's a different story for the... Uh